Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss V. How are you? I hope you're all more than well. I am very well and I'm very happy to be here with you today and keep exploring the traditional Mexican tiles known as Talaveras Mexicanas. These uh, videos that I'm recording and I'm sharing with you are uh, inspired by a recent trip that I uh, had in Mexico and I always loved the colorful beautiful Mexican art mostly the Talavera styles which are the example of the fusion between the native pre-colonial art and the art that Spaniard brought during the colonization and something uh, uh, even in the um, you know after something so awful and violent like a colonization process still the humankind is able to create something beautiful, to find and see beauty, to seek beauties, and to create something that we still enjoy nowadays. So the Talaveras Mexicanas are handmade and hand-painted tiles. We are going to do it not on ceramic, but on journal, because I want to focus as visual artist on the design itself. If you know me, or if you're new to this channel, I suggest you to peruse around my previous video, and you will see that I work a lot with many different type of patterns, zentangles, optical illusion. I feel that it's very, very beneficial under many points of view. It's beneficial to train our fine motor skills, our coordination brain hand, our mental focus, relaxations, being mindful because they kind of force our mind to be extremely focused and present in the experience, right? In the movement of our hands, in the lines that we are tracing and more. It's a beautiful opportunity to become very fluent and very knowledgeable about the most important elements of art and design, which are lines, shapes, colors, the use of the space, very important as well and more. For today's practice, I'm going to use my mix and media journal. I encourage you to use yours or to provide a journal for you just because you can keep track of all of your progress and all of your beautiful artworks. If you don't have a journal, you can use a mix and media paper. If you have a big pad, such as 9 per 12 inches or even bigger, I suggest you to divide your space, your page in two or even more, because you don't want to commit to a big, big design. I always say that I have very few rules, even in school when I teach my students, and one of these rules is that we always finish what we start. Even if you start to practice with me and you realize that that is not your favorite practice, that is not going exactly where you imagined, please commit to it and finish it. Maybe you will be surprised and most of the time it happens at the very end that you will be very happy and pleased. But even in the case that you're not, as I always say to my students, the process is more important than the final product. The experience gave you the opportunity to train some more skills, to learn something new, to push a little yourself, like to push yourself outside of your comfort zone right to push some boundaries and maybe on the back of the page on the design you can add the notes with the pencil specifying exactly what you would do differently another time what you liked and what you would keep and what you would change or what you didn't like so the experience in itself the process itself is what really bring us the benefit and the personal connection so i really encourage you to commit to the design. You can do the whole video with me, posing after instructions, preparing your materials, and then practice along with me. You can watch the video and then practice at your own convenience, or you can divide the videos in two or three different sessions according to your schedule. For example, if you want to dedicate 10-15 minutes three times per week, you can do with me the intro and the design with a pencil. Then in another session, you will do half or three quarter of the painting process, and then you will finish the painting and the outlines. Remember, these videos are available for you, so you can really adjust them to your own needs. Remember that I also have a silver and gold memberships available, um, donation, if you wish to support my channel in a you know, different way. And I created a group on Facebook that is called Art with Miss V. You just have to subscribe to this channel, ask the permission to join the group. It's a private group. It's very safe and nice community when we can share pictures and uh, maybe uh, ideas, opinions about the pieces that we, be we have been creating together using my videos and tutorials. So as I was saying, mix a media paper, 
I will use traditional watercolor, so I have my watercolor pad. Use any watercolor pad that you have available. A couple of brushes, the small and extra small, a cup with water, a pencil for drawing, and an eraser just in case you want or you need to erase. And at the end, we're gonna do some outlines with an extra fine black Sharpies or any brand that you have available. Remember that you can adjust and in the description box, I can give you also alternative. If you don't have watercolors, you can use a brush markers, for example, that they are a little easier to manage and to control compared to just a traditional brush so if you're still kind of learning your fine model skills so you feel better or safer with the brush markers go for it it's a beautiful preparation step to the regular traditional brush if you prefer to use coloring pencil because that is your love and your passion and your media go for it you can shade them and blend them overlap them if you're using coloring watercolor pencil you can even blend some water on top at the very end so with one video i'm giving you multiple opportunity to really exercise your creativity now i'm gonna switch the camera so we can start Okay, guys, this is my journal. As you can see, it's a square. I'm going to reframe another square in my page because, as I told you at the beginning, I don't want to have a huge design that is going to take forever and maybe I'm not able to commit. We're going to do everything with the pencil and then after we paint, we're going to take care of the outlines. So we're going to... I will do it freehand because the original Talaveras are handmade in every single step of the process and they are hand painted. So I personally want to see my design definitely well done and symmetric and harmonic and well crafted, but I wanna see the little natural imperfections in it. But if you wanna help yourself with a ruler to trace the perfect square, help yourself with a ruler, you will be able to calculate exactly the center of your a tile let's call it like that so maybe you can even trace like extra extra light lines to kind of divide the space so it's gonna help you to build the design today we're gonna do another beautiful design and we're gonna start to work in from the bottom so go ahead and trace the half if you want we're gonna start with a nice small semi-circle followed by another one and another one a little farther apart. Now we're gonna keep building into this one. We're gonna do one more. And we're gonna kind of start to build a nice pattern we're going to do this spiky triangle, so you go up and down, up and down, up and down, all the way. You see, it's not perfectly symmetric and this is exactly what we want, at least what I want. Now we're going to start to build up from this design, one, two. This type of petals is very similar to the shape. So we go with a little tip up and then back down, curvy and nice. It's very similar to one type of lines that we use for our last design. Now we are going to create an arch inside each one of them. Take your time, go as low as you need. You can pause the video so you have a sort of a screenshot of the design and you can keep working. Now inside, we are going to, I don't know if I want to do a triangle. We're going to leave this for later. I'm going to think about later what I want to do with that. Now we're going to do exactly the same just between these petals. So we bring the design we advance it like we bring it up up and down up and down and we're gonna do the same we're gonna do a little arch inside now we are creating 
different sessions, right? Because, uh, let me just fix the camera a little bit like that. Because we are, we want to have like a multiple, multiple uh, spaces for our colors, right? We want to make sure that we have uh, plenty of opportunity to color using multiple, multiple colors because that's the goal of the Talaveras. Now we go one more time. A little arch inside. And then I would do one last that will basically be central or more or less central, right? Now inside, I'm going to do circle that I will paint, but at the very end, where it's time for us to do the outlines, remember that in doing the black outlines, we also have the opportunity to add the patterns on top of our design. We are not going to do it so much because it's a really beautiful, complicated design. So we don't want it to make it too confusing, but we are going to reach it as well. Now, these two corners, as you can see, this is very busy, right? This is completely empty. So we don't want to do it as busy as this part because this is the main design, but we want to make sure that we use the space and we add something. Otherwise, it will feel unbalanced. So we'll do two beautiful big drops. One and two coming in a diagonal from the corner i will add a couple of circles around and i will do a smaller drop in the center which will give me the opportunity to use two different colors inside now don't worry about the light lines that you trace don't worry we're gonna kind of if they are bothering you and they are too like uh, heavy on the paper and too dark, you're gonna carefully erase them so they won't show underneath the watercolors. If you're using brush markers, coloring pencil, you don't even need to erase because they won't be visible at all. And now, I'm gonna start, I have my water, I have my watercolor palette, and I'm gonna start to do the painting. So Talaveras are um, well known for their beautiful, vivacious colors. I invite you and encourage you to experiment with the color wheel, mix colors. If you do not have too many tertiary colors available in your palette, mix them. You know that you can mix the watercolors to create the more colors. You can mix the white to create a tint of the same color. You can mix the gray. If you don't have the gray, you will make it mix in black and white. Just give yourself the opportunity to experiment. I'm going to use definitely a mix between warm colors and cold colors. Dark orange or red cannot be missed. You know, it's such an important color in Mexican art, so we're gonna definitely include it. We are gonna include some nice blues and greens and stuff like that. If you notice also, I'm using like a pretty dry technique. It's a dry on wet, sorry, on dry, means that I wet the brush, I don't wet the paper, and even in wetting the brush and mixing it with the watercolor, I pay attention because I honestly don't want too much water because in that case, it would really uh, make the colors bleed into the design, which is something that instead we really want to avoid. So we want to try our best to control, to have a nice creamy watercolor that will show pretty saturated on paper, so very intense. And we can control the, you know, the color. We can control it uh, and it will go in the shapes that we want it to go and it won't bleed. In case tiny little imperfection happens, and they will, please embrace them. You know, let it dry. You can fix it a little bit, painting on top. But also, remember, these are hand-painted. So, 
if this was a real Taladeras, right, and you have a multiple design or the same design on multiple tiles, each tile will look original and a little different, okay? So I'm going with the deep, I did like a light olive, a nice orange, a deep turquoise, and I keep adding and heavy fun. So I'm, go, I'm gonna switch for a, a red, which got a little. And now carefully and gently, I'm gonna do my triangle. The pressure is also very important. We add almost no pressure on the paper. We touch gently the paper with our brush. If we add too much pressure, we're gonna kind of make the color bleed outside of the shape, but also we won't be able to kind of move our hands uh, with the brush to move it nice and lightly. When we realize that the brush is becoming too dry or the color is becoming a little too pale, we can go back and grab some more. What I like about the traditional watercolors for this design is that they reduce the time, right? Because working with watercolors like we are doing right now is definitely a little faster than coloring with pencil, um, for example. But also what I like is that that give me the, you see the different saturation, you can still see some strokes uh, and I feel that it's really uh, beautiful. I really like it. That is that little surprise, right? The unexpected uh, that comes from watercolor that I personally like so much. The color, the same color will show. You see, I added a little too much water here. It's bleeding a little bit. I'm gonna just let it set and let it dry. And now let's go to another color. I think I'm gonna have a nice, nice, nice golden yellow. So if you don't have a, a dark yellow, you can mix a little bit of orange into the yellow and blend it together, scrub it with the brush until you have your nice, beautiful yellow, and then you can paint. Just make sure that it's pretty dry, right? The previous area, in this case, the red the triangles are pretty dry. So you can move kind of comfortably around them. Very nice, I love it. We are focusing now on the warm side of the color wheel. So this beautiful golden yellow and the red, but we broke it with a deep turquoise. So we are making it visually very interesting, right? We are enhancing and supporting the pattern with the colors. Please feel free to make changes to your color palette. Relationship with colors is really personal and it is important that you feel represented when you do something, that you find your personal connection. We are not here in a Talavera's uh, factory so you don't have to respect 100 uh, percent you know their the style we are we can learn about something we can appreciate something and we can also make it like a a personal connection with it and so make sure that you do that look i forgot a little circle scene here and now i just noticed now we're gonna take care of the inside of this petal. We can do it with one single color or you can do it actually with different colors according to the lines. I think that this is probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with a nice light aqua color. If you don't have an aqua color, you can mix your blue with some white and you can make it a little lighter. 
even a hint of green if you want to mix a tree so light blue light green and white you should have more or less this color that i'm using if you want to go with, with something different if you want to go all completely warm just do it There is something about these colors that always attracted me. I think it's just like, it's been my favorite since forever. I am definitely like a, a cold side of the color wheel. All tones of blues and greens, but in particular, this aqua color. Maybe because I love the ocean and I love the sea so much. I'm Pisces, so this is my zodiac too. So water for me, it's really important. Definitely is the most important element. Although I live surrounded by beautiful mountains and I really appreciate them. But still, I feel that there is some magic in a beautiful sea or ocean, right? So I incorporate it as much as possible because I incorporate it part of myself in every little design. Remember, it's very important to make it personal. If you don't make it personal, it's not gonna work. With my students in school, I try my best to really make and create that personal connections between them and the artist or the art style, or the media and technique that we are studying. I notice that the results are much, much better. Now I'm going to switch it to a light blue and then I will probably do a darker at the end and see what happens, like a sort of a gradient scale of blue. This is a traditional sky blue. If you only have a darker blue in your palette, you can mix that with some white. And you should have this sky blue. And even if you don't, it's totally fine. I can wait actually for you to join the Art with Miss B Facebook group and post the pictures. I really, you know, that page would be so colorful just because each one of us as a different styles and of course our tiles will look all, all different and so beautiful in their uh, differences, right? Also what I love about using watercolors on mixing media paper is that the texture, it's different, right? If you use watercolors on a watercolor paper, the watercolor paper will absorb the watercolor differently and uh, has some texture, right? That instead a mixed media paper doesn't because a mixed media paper is pretty smooth, right? And you can still all the wet media such as watercolors, but of course that it will absorb them differently. And personally, I like it because you can see all the strokes. It looks like a stained glass at the end. I don't know. I have that feeling. Now I'm going to go for a blue, just a little darker. But still not super dark. And I say that it's also so relaxing, the fact that we are taking some minutes in a day or in a week and spend some time painting and working with colors. Doesn't get better. No, I don't think so. It doesn't get better than this. And I decided to start this channel 
because I really wanted to, you know, I to share my love and my passion for art teaching and art practice. I have been teaching in school for 10 years now, primary and secondary, so elementary and middle school. And I have been working and studying a lot and I came out with my own like uh, teaching strategies that are extremely successful with my students and I got so many positive feedbacks from students, their parents, their family and I decided to share them with the larger community here through YouTube because you can reach so many people right around the world and for me it's really important. I think I'm gonna do this central one with a darker blue. You can dark up your blue adding just a tiny little bit of black. Be careful because the black could make your blue too like a dark, so you want to control that. Do it little by little, don't just grab a lot of uh, black. Let me see. I want it probably just slightly darker. There you go. And as I was saying, uh, like uh, art, it's beneficial. When people ask, uh, why do we teach art in school and why should we include art education? in every single school curriculum is because, not because we want to train necessarily more professional artists. Zero point, probably 0.01% of the students that I teach and that I taught in the past became, will become a professional artist. But it's because we want to train our mind to critical thinking process, problem solving skills, um, to compassion, open-mindedness, uh, sensibility towards other. We want to train important skills that we risk uh, to lose because with the technology, right? Our new generation, the types all the time, uh, they use really different skill and they're risking of losing others and my point of view is that even with all the technology that we have available and all the progress and everything, we should never lose or substitute our skill. We should build upon them. So we should keep adding and not substituting because the fact that the kids, for example, are extremely fast in typing doesn't mean and they don't know how to hold a pen or a pencil and how to write. That for me is a loss. It's not a, uh, a progress, right? So art help us to keep our fine model skills, coordination skills sharp. And this is very important in every stage of our life. When we are kids, when we are young, when we are adults, and when we are seniors. We want to really keep those skills. Now I'm going to start to paint the circle. I will play with some instead the warm colors. I might do all of them orange. I feel the orange balance and being on the opposite side of the color wheel, it balanced pretty well and it, they support and they enhance each other. But once again, if you wanna try and do something different, go ahead and do something different. And so this is why we teach art. We teach art because we want to train a well-rounded citizen, right? We want to train people and students that can analyze things, that they can solve the problems and issues, that can overcome, right, obstacle. And in every single art practice, there are so many life lessons included. For example, embrace the unexpected. When you use watercolors, you can be a master of it. And of course, the more you master the media, the less surprises you will have which is also kind of a little sad so I suggest you don't master something too well because then uh, you won't have the surprise of what happened right by the little accident that opens new possibility for us and new opportunities so that mental set and mental approach that when something unexpected happens on our paper and maybe we didn't want it uh, we want to embrace it and we're going to turn it into something different that we're going to include it in our design and it will belong forever 
to that design and that specific moment in our life and that specific life experience. How important, how great, how valuable is that? You know, a lot. Now I'm going to try and do this dark red. I want to try to bring it back to this, the frame. Let's see if I can make it though. I need to mix uh, probably a couple, a darker red. Let's see, seems seem pretty bright, but it's okay. Another important lesson is that we finish of what we start, right? Even when we don't like it, we analyze it, we take mental and physical notes, and another time we're going to do something different or the same thing in a different way. But we treasure the experience. We treasure the process. And like in life, right? Sometimes the things don't go exactly as we want them to go. Sometimes so we will have to do things that we not really favor, right? Do we quit? Absolutely not. We face them. We do our best. And then we decided if we don't want to have the same experience ever again. But at least we did the experience. So we know what we are talking about, right? Also, when we do, for example, when we share art and we do art critiques, they like uh, teaching students and teaching ourselves uh, to analyze uh, something and criticize in the say that giving feedback to something but basing our feedback on data of what we can really observe and perceive being neutral so non-negative or positive but in a neutral respectful way it's a beautiful social skills that all humans should have and unfortunately when you look on tv or media you notice that adults mostly adults and therefore, if we don't do it as adults, we cannot expect our young or our kids or youth to do it. You see that people don't have these skills. They are losing this uh, important social skill, which is uh, we can disagree and agree in disagreement. We can express opinion properly, neutrally and respectfully basing our opinions and our claims on something that is, you know, that we can observe, right? And not just opening our mouth and shouting out whatever. That is something important. This is what our critique teach. And let's not even, and when we consider like uh, art history, we learn uh, so much about humankind and humanity and our evolution through the art, the study of art, artifacts and architecture from the past, right? And learning about our past and our roots as human on this planet is something really valuable that should not go underestimated. So I could go on forever listing all the benefits of art and why people, regardless of their artistic background, their artistic skills and talents, we should all practice art in our life, in school and after school. The same, like we should have the same approach that we have towards sports and physical activity. We don't stop to practice sport or do physical activity when we realize that we're not gonna be professional sport players, right? We keep doing it because we know that it's healthy for us. It's healthy for our mind, for our body. And so we keep doing it. The same is for art. It's just that the narrative about art has been really wrong. And now we are changing it, right? Art is not only for professional artists. Art and art practice should be for everybody. It's something so beautiful and so important that will bring joy to your life, will bring mindfulness, we bring calm and relaxation while training skills. So it's the best. So this is why we teach art in school. 
This is why we teach art to our kids. This is why we want our kids to practice. Even if they will stop at one point, because maybe when they are teenagers, they started to kind of figure it out that they want to have more other interests or whatever, it's fine. But still, let's keep in that art in your life in many different ways. It's important. Even if you don't feel that you want to practice that much, but even in observing art, observing other doing art, it's very inspirational and it brings you benefit. So these are the reasons why I teach art in school and these are the reasons why I decided to open this YouTube channel and create this beautiful community for which I'm really grateful. Now, 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 we're going to make a decision over there. And I think that I will have a couple of blue because I want to create some sort of connection. I will definitely want to bring this gold back. So it's beautiful. Probably I will bring this gold and this deep deal inside the drop. And then we decided for the seal color for the background. So we're going to kind of have some connection. We're going to embrace the design through the colors. You see the power of colors. So I'm going to grab my golden yellow. You put a little bit of orange in it to make it nice and intense and gold. I probably, I will do the outside of the drop, so, so the frame. And if you think that your colors at the end look a little too pale you still want to go over you can go over with another coat with no problem just make sure that you don't add too much pressure you don't scrub too hard over and over the same spot because you know you can still damage the paper considering almost also that is not specific watercolor paper but you can definitely do it with you know carefully now i'm gonna take my deep turquoise deep green turquoise and i'm going to paint the drop inside this one is a little light i'm gonna dark it up and then maybe I'm going to let it dry and see if it's enough or if I wanted to dark it up a little more. And then I really want this uh, burgundy over here, exactly this one. Now let's see if I can recreate that. Maybe, okay, I got my brush um, dirty with that deep turquoise and without rinsing it i went over the red yes and i got it and i spoiled basically the red and then i have this dark sort of a maroon yes i really like it we're gonna do it for all the circles And actually, since I have it on my brush, I'm gonna go over these couple of triangles that are featuring a lighter red compared to this side. And I want it instead to be nice and burgundy, different from the other red that we used for, that I used for framing the petals. You see, you can go over with another coat. Just make sure that your brush, it's really just lightly wet so you don't have any bleeding. Now we're going to make a decision for the background. Probably maybe this uh, green olive color could be good. I don't want to use the yellow, not even lighter, because I want this gold to really pop. 
I think that I'm gonna go for it. Uh, now, if you don't have this type of olive green, it's gonna be a little tricky for you to do it. Maybe you can go with an extremely, extremely light green. So you will mix the white to your green and you will have a very pastel green. That would also be nice and pretty neutral. If you want to instead go for a warm background, maybe you can have a very light uh, yellow mix with a very light pink to have this nice uh, peach. But I would do something like that it's delicate. I would not do black, I would not do something too dark maybe. But it's really up to you then. You can make your own decision because as I said before, you know, the relationship with colors is very personal. So we need to make sure that now if you, you see, I'm doing like a, just like this because I realized that I have a little too much water. So I want to make sure that I can control before I spread it out. So this is why I was tapping the brush here and there. And because I'm using traditional watercolors, the colors will show differently, right? More saturated, less saturated, which is exactly what I want and what I like about it. I love the fact that we're going to see the strokes and we're going to see the texture and uh, it's going to be even more handmade. It's going to look even more handmade and hand painted. Like this is what I like the most. If you're using brush markers, you will also see some texture actually and some brush strokes, mostly when you do big surfaces like the background area. Did you see you can rework over? I know I should change the brush, but. I like some brushes more than other and I get not lazy it's just that when I'm all focused in the design I don't want to interrupt myself and change the brush even if I have them ready here I kind of get stubborn and I want to do everything with one brush but it is not necessary the more uh, effective way of practicing but still it's my way And it works for me. So you have to kind of little by little find your own way and what works better for you. And you're gonna adopt it into your practice. Probably If I had to do the same design once again, and I might do it in my own time, um, I probably will mix these colors with a little bit of white to make it uh, more subtle and a little less bright and warm. Now we're going to spread it around, just dip in a little bit of water, not too much, remember, very nice, a gentle pressure, we don't want to add too much pressure, right, because we can break the paper, or we can make the color bleed too much, I'm going to see this beautiful nice texture, just, I will smooth it down, just gently. Now, before we do the outlines, our design needs to be completely dry and we're gonna let it dry. And once we're dry, we are gonna proceed and do the extra fine lines. 
To check if your piece is dry, you will just gently tap it with your hands and your hands should feel completely dry. And if so, you're ready to start the outlines. I'm gonna use an extra fine black Sharpies. You can use any brand. If you want more professional, the Omicron, you know, the, the Micron, sorry, uh, markers are very good, but I wanna show you that we, we don't need to use super expensive supplies in order to create something really beautiful and meaningful. Now, very carefully, slowly, you go over the lines that we trace with a pencil. And then, if you decide to do so, we can add a few more patterns and details. Although, since these are, as you can see, already pretty intricate patterns and busy and very colorful, I wouldn't add too much because we don't want to really distract the eyes from this beautiful colorful pattern that we already set on our surface. If you happen to go a little bit outside the line, you will just make the black outline a little thicker. Once again, we don't want it to be perfect. We want it to be beautifully imperfect. Oh my, I love this definition, beautifully imperfect. Like life. It's beautifully imperfect. And off we go. Now we go the circle. Nice and slow. Don't skip this part because it's a beautiful way to kind of close the activity dedicate some love and attention to our piece. We are taking it all in. The action of doing outlines is giving us the opportunity to review the design, to experience the design again. And it is also so relaxing, honestly. It's just you, your colorful paper, your Sharpie, your hand, your love and care for the things that, that you create and the things that, that you are that you make. I personally love very much when two different colors overlap accidentally a little bit and they give you that, you know, extra colors and that extra natural outlines. It makes the design really alive and more artisanal hopefully at the end of this unit uh, these four videos that i'm dedicating to traditional talaveras you will have like a pretty good understanding of uh, these traditional Mexican patterns and the way that we can use colors right, to enhance and support the pattern.
and create a specific feeling on the surface and so on the viewer including yourself and also you will be able to kind of compare and contrast the design that i'm proposing you that i proposed you and decide which one is the most uh, beautiful to you which one speaks to you the most and maybe you can even in kind of mix together and create your own design by a melting pot of different elements from these four design or you can replicate the four design together into a beautiful uh, bigger design and pattern so the only thing that i probably will do i will add a few patterns with the black not really too much I just want to support this idea of an abstract flower, so this curved line that can kind of uh, remind us of petals. And probably I will do tiny little petals around these circles, so I'm turning them into tiny little flowers. Floral pattern flowers and leaves are very very typical uh, design for the Mexican Talaveras. I am personalizing the practice because as I told you in order to really understand something you need to connect and there is no connection if we don't make the practice our own if we don't add our own personality. And I think that I will leave the rest of the design as it is because it looks beautiful and rich and I don't want to overdo it. But if you want to add more, go ahead and add more and please make sure that you share your picture. I'm going to switch the camera so I can say goodbye. Okay, friends, we did it again as we always do. And this is the beautiful design that we have been creating together. So this one is the first design that we did in the first video. This one is the second design that we did in the second video. And this is the third design. As you see, we are going better and better and more colorful and we are keep exploring different options to create this uh, uh, Mexican tile inspired design. I hope you had fun as much as I did. I feel really like energized and relaxed and very positive after practice and I wish you feel the same. Remember to subscribe, to like my video, share your comments or your feedback or your experience. Ask to join the Art With Miss B Facebook group so we can really create this uh, very knitted communities even if we are very far away from each other and if we are going if we are using a cold media such as a computer or a phone but we can still create something unique and warm and real so i wish you a wonderful day and i see you next week for our fourth and final design dedicated to mexican talaveras ciao